Brando, I finna slam dunk. Get big on you fake pumps. That bump in the fake pump. Bitch, fit for the pump fake. Got him talking like first take. Get it right on the first take. Hit the hole in the first take. And I'm like, damn, I need a drink catcher when I lay down to go to sleep. Cause all of my dreams as of lately been scaring me. But these ain't no dreams, they nightmares apparently. Some scary scenes. And I'm like, damn, I need a drink catcher when I lay down to go to sleep. Cause all of my dreams as of lately been scaring me. But these ain't no dreams, they nightmares apparently. Some Bro, you see how hard it is trying to goddamn do some shit on your own? Trust me. <laughs> I know you know, bro. I gotta be the I gotta be the sound guy. I gotta be the goddamn engineer. All this shit, bro. This shit aggravating as fuck. That's the beauty of the shit, though. Honestly, like, yeah, that's the beauty of it, though. Cause at the end of the My day, fault. see, I feel like when you, when you get the praise, you feel me? It's like damn. Even if don't nobody else know, you know, like, see, I put the work in. You feel me? Yeah. Like that's the beauty of the shit, though. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I, um, I had a meeting with somebody recently. I ain't gonna say who it is yet, but recently, and and they was like giving me credit. They was like, "Man, it's crazy, man. You do everything on your own, this yeah. and that with the wood." Bro, I couldn't even like appreciate the credit because I was like, "Yeah, I do do everything on my own, yeah. but I don't fucking want to." <laughs> See, like, I want some help bruh, me. What, <laughs> bro? Help me, yeah. please. S O S. Yeah, bro, it'd be so straight if I just could like have somebody do all this that yeah. I just was doing yeah. earlier. Just do all this, and I just walk in, and I just have my drink, and I record. I got to stop drinking, though. But <laughs> and I record. This would be so straight, bro. But yeah. instead, I got to, dog. It's what come with it, though. Yeah, that's a part of the process, I feel like, man. When you really want to go somewhere, when you really when you have a vision, you know that you ain't really willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. certain certain things for... Cause I mean, you could have people part of your team and a part of what you got going on, but if they ain't believing in you, then that's just gonna slow you down in the long run. Yeah, that's something I want to talk about too. But before we get there, man, another episode of Sit Down with Slim. Yeah. Um, I got a very special guest in here, and y'all know I never say that. <laughs> it's somebody I've been uh waiting to get in contact with. True. And uh, yeah, y'all need to check his music out, man. I've been listening to it for a little minute. First time I heard it, I was like, this is something different. This is something I definitely can relate to. Uh, Sabo, man. What it do, man? Glad to be here. Appreciate the opportunity, bro. No, I appreciate you coming, bro. Because I mean, I told you, I've been waiting on this for a little second, bro. But yeah, man, Um, I'm doing something a little different this time. Uh, Let's get to know Sabo, man. For sure. Tell me something I need to know about Sabo. Cause I've been listening to your music. Um, a little something about me, about Sabo. Uh, Sabo stands for Strength Acquired by Overcoming. And let me say, it's, it's Sabo World for everybody. You know, if you're looking on Google, iTunes, wherever you're searching. But Sabo stands for Strength Acquired by Overcoming because I really believe that, you know, we all got a story. We all go through hard times. But no matter what you go through, no matter what you're going through, what you've been through, or what you're going to go through, you always going to get through. And mm -hmm. I really believe that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm a fucked up person, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't <laughs> did a lot of fucked up shit, but I try to I try to represent some type of positivity because I do believe that it equal growth at the end of the day, you feel me? I can't believe that, dog. You can't? Nah. I'm an energy type person. I can mm -hmm. tell you are too. Yeah. So today was my first time meeting you and you and like soon as you walked up, I seen you speak to everybody that was yeah. around, and I was like, "Oh, nah, that's a super positive person." Yeah, I could never see, I I could never see you doing anything that was too wrong. Maybe maybe something that you felt was wrong. Yeah, like you stealing know, the candy bar from the stove. I ain't even gonna get in all or whatever I'm thinking about. But yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah, 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 I would ask you them questions. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like you said, yeah, I mean, I have my own my own view on on what I've done and whatnot. But you know, I'm I'm flawed in my own ways. You feel me? But I just mm -hmm. try to I just try to add some type of some type of positive positive vibes into the world. You feel me? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I just had a conversation with one of my homeboys. Um, he moved from around here, and we grew up together. And we was talking about regrets. Yeah. And I and and he asked me. He was like, "Slim, what's your biggest regret?" And I was like, Phew. "He was like, I, I don't regret nothing. I feel like we went through that things as youngsters." Because um, we were supposed to, or whatever, and I was like, boy, my biggest regret was not playing basketball. Mm. I was supposed to play ball. What, what position you supposed to play? Um, 
I was so I was so young when I did play. I don't know. I played three. I played two. I played one. I played four because mm. I kept getting taller because I grew up small. So but, basically, what you're saying is we're gonna have to bet by fifty dollars one on one going to twelve then. <laughs> I'm with it now. Uh, I'm out of shape right now. Give me like three <laughs> weeks. You see, I'm drinking these <laughs> bills right now, boy. Oh, boy, boy. I can't hoop. They were hooping today. That's why yeah. we were talking about it. And they remember I could hoop, but boy, I'm so out of shape. I've been drinking and shit. But yeah. what's your biggest regret, bro? The B1000, I have to say, I don't really have no regrets as well. So you though. sound like him. But now, nah, you got to have one you'll I, take away. I, nah, like, I, I, I really believe like hindsight is 2020, and I, I don't like that hindsight is always 2020. But that, like, Beautiful Pain, the project, like, that's something that I really believe, like, some shit going to be. You gonna go? You gonna have some some experiences that 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 they might be the most fucked up experiences in the world. Like some people go to prison, some people do life in prison, but throughout that process, they gain some type of knowledge or they gain physical strength. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And everything that I done been through, regardless of how how hard or how how it might have hurt me at the moment, like when I look back, I got something from out of it. You feel me? Yeah. And it be hard. To, it be hard for me to. It be, it's a challenge for me to 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 embrace whatever it is I'm supposed to be learning throughout the process. But like like I said, hindsight really be twenty twenty. Like I don't know, I ain't, ain't too much that I, cause I try not to dwell on too much because I, I I ain't gonna fly. I'm an emotional person, and if I sit and dwell on something for too long, I get in, I get. I'm talking about a, a little phase of like I don't want to call it depression. How emotional though? What you mean? How emotional? Like, there's there's emotional people like they see a turtle get ran over and they start crying. That might I ain't gonna cry, but that'll hurt my heart. I, I like turtles, <laughs> bro. I ain't gonna flick. That's what, that. I, if I seen a turtle bleed, if it's a lie, I pull the car over and move it off the road. Bro. For real, I fuck with turtles though. That's specific to the all turtles. right. So that's a bad example. <laughs> emotional person, like like every little thing that happens, you be like, we're all gonna die. No, but when things happen to me. It take me a second to snap back in the reality of like adjusting. Like, say for instance, so my car fucked up, mm-hmm. and just knowing the type of person I am, I try to laugh as much as possible when something bad happens. So my car, if my car went crank up. You know what I'm saying? I know me. I sit and be like, well, damn, my car don't work. How I'm gonna get the How I'm gonna get to work tomorrow? How I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? I just start thinking too much on it. And it's like. The next day ain't even happen yet. You feel me? I know that's yeah. that's how I am. So I try not to even sit and 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 and, and allow something just to be out in my head for too long. I try to just, you know, take care of what I can for the moment and just keep it pushing as much as possible. You feel me? Yeah, that's that positive shit you be pushing, bro. And I'm I'm right there with you, bro. As, as far as positivity, uh, positivity yeah. goes, and energy and growth and all that, bro. I'm right there with you, dog. And that's something we are gonna get into in a little minute. Um, where you from, though? I'm from the baby A. I'm from the AUG, South Augusta, to be exact. See, I ain't even know you was from Augusta. I couldn't even tell by your music. Yeah, yeah, I had no mm-hmm. idea. Literally, like when we was on the way. To record this right here, yeah. my homeboy was like, "Hey, bro, where he from?" I was like, "I don't know. I'm about to ask him in a minute." Mm. Damn, that that's cool. Shit, I guess that's cool. But yeah, I just got to represent for the city a little more. But I'm from Augusta, though. Basically, what I mean by that is like your music it's, it's isn't like sound. somebody from Augusta. Yeah, for sure. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's amazing, that. actually, yeah. because uh, I just was telling somebody today too, because people was asking me. Um, you're actually about to be one of the first artists on my podcast in a long time because mm. I decided I was separating. Like you know, I'll do I'll do interviews with artists, but I won't put them on my podcast. Yeah. But I told you I've been waiting to do something with you for a long time, yeah. and I was like, that's somebody I definitely can put Appreciate on my podcast because, bro. Sure. bro, people from Augusta, bro. I'm not from Augusta, so people don't get too offended by what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> Let me sip my bill. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, bro, because you're not you're not gonna want to be a part of what I'm about to say right now, <laughs> bro. Artists from Augusta, bro, they hold they nuts so hard and they got so much ego, bro. It's just like I don't want to be a part of that, bro. It's yeah. like, man, ain't nobody made it yet, so we all supposed to work together and bubble. come up or whatever. And of course, I'm not from here, so I'm not a part of that bubble. But, um. You supposed to want to work together and come up together in a platform like mine's. Um, I always say mine's. That's not the correct word, but I always say that. I lived in Germany. It was a town called mine's. But anyway, that's all subject. <laughs> <laughs> but now, uh, 
with my show, let's say I average X amount of plays a week. Um, over half of the plays I average is in Atlanta. Yeah. The rest of them is like I might have twenty plays and uh scattered over Texas. I might have twenty plays in Virginia because I'm an army brat. I've been so many places. Then I might have like forty plays over over Florida because I've been so many places in Florida and I met so many uh so many people over that. So it's like this is a platform you should want to come on and you know. Want to expand your audience? Get out there, yeah, get, yeah. Get some but people in Augusta, bro, they don't. They so small minded. It's like if you're not popping in my city, then you ain't nobody pop, popping yeah. in your city, bro. Yeah, ain't nobody popping in it. That, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm afraid of that mindset. I try to escape that as much as possible. Though. And that's why I didn't know where you were from. For sure, because you're not like that. And then on top of that, you uh you do a lot of things that most people don't do. Like you understand things that most artists don't understand. It's like uh uh you're supposed to uh build a relationship with the local DJ. You're yeah. supposed to build a relationship with the local podcaster. You can't expect nobody just to give you, man. Yeah. yeah. You got to work for yeah. it. And you work hard, bro, and I Try noticed to- that shit cuz at first like at first when I first seen you I listen. I listen to you on main podcast, of course. Shout out main more than the Shout masters. Them, Y'all bro. subscribe, man. Yeah, that's my dog. But uh, I listened to you on there, and I was like, oh, okay. Woody, woody, woo. But uh, it took a little second, and I was like, man, let me listen to his music. Clicked on it, and I was like, oh, this shit's amazing. I ain't going to lie. Sure. <laughs> my favorite song is Dreamcatcher, bro. Sure, yeah. And that's why, bro, a lot of people, we in the house right now with all my homeboys, and they know, bro. That dream catcher, that's my shit, bro. I've been sure. playing that shit, everything, bro. And sure. it's rare. They know it's rare that it, that it, it's a local artist, and I support them real hard. Like a lot of people ain't even know I'm. I stay in Augusta because I mm. I got so many Atlanta people on my shit. Hey, I appreciate that shit, bro. For real, for real. Yeah, but dog, what inspires you to make music? I know I, I was talking too fucking much. No. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> It's so much that I think inspires my music, but I think for me personally, I think the main thing probably have to be pain. I think pain, cause music is like my relief, bro. Like that's what Beautiful I, pain. I, I get. I get it all lot. Like, cause I ain't, I ain't never really been nobody that I really. Like I told you, I'm emotional, but I don't know how to really express it to people too well. You feel me? So I, I hold a lot in, and like music is where I could. I can I can get creative with that shit and let it out. So it's like I could be talking about certain specific things that I know what I'm talking about, but I I I switch it up into a way to where people don't know what exactly I'm talking about. But you know it, it's 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 in a form that they can they can relate in certain whatever way that they relate to it or whatever. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But I think pain probably probably that's that's the biggest inspiration behind my music. What gravitates you towards music? Oh, uh, I think that I was I was blessed to be in a family that was surrounded by like I was surrounded by it growing up, man. My mama was in the choir growing up, like well, for me growing up. So I've been around choir practices, been in the church choir growing up myself. My uncle Tony, he played in the band James Brown band. He played uh, bass guitar. My brother rap. He was pretty big in the, in the state of Georgia, around the country, honestly. Um, his name was Double A. So I actually I been hands on around music. My whole life, like, and my brother, I was at a rap group, uh, a, 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 a Christian rap group back in the day, the CH Boys. That was the name of the church, Canaan okay. Heights. So I've I been around, I've been around music my whole life. Honestly, it's like I'm supposed to be in this shit. That's how I feel. And now it's all just panning up. Yeah, and I, okay, my biggest regret would have to be not believing in myself, bro. Now that I See, think about it. Now we getting it. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that that would be my biggest regret to be all the way real. Damn, you just made me think of some shit, bro. Damn. But yeah, cause I should have been doing music, bro. But hindsight is 2020. But now I should have been doing music because I got freestyle videos from growing up. Me and my brother used to rock. And like a nigga, you a nigga Ben Post been doing this shit just to be real. And people, people always think like this shit came out of nowhere from me. But it's like I knew I could do this. I been knew I could do this. But people just never saw this shit until now. But it'll all make sense for everybody one day when I I put a lot of other information. So out. So what made you doubt yourself? Oh, uh, 
Man, I don't know. That's just that's just a part of my internal affairs, I guess. Just something I've been dealing with my whole life. Finally mm -hmm. starting to overcome that. That's that's one of my challenges, I guess. Just I don't know. You know, I could blame it on my upbringing or you know whatever external um, forces or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, it's just something that I've been challenged with my whole life, and and that's just something that I I struggle with and I'm overcoming. You feel me? I can take a stab at it. I think I think like people like us, bro. That's overachievers, cause I know we obviously you're like, overachievers. Yeah. We expect a lot, bro. That's bruh. true. So it's like we'll have a dream, like uh, I don't know what your dream is, but one of my biggest dreams right now, currently as I'm 28 years old, is to get a Ferrari Spider. Yeah. If I got that Ferrari Spider tomorrow, if it was just handed to me, it'll fuck my world up. Yeah. But if I got it off of like something that I work for, I'll be like. It'll be so momentary. It'll be like, mm, I got a Ferrari Spider. Damn, what's next? That fucking that fucking Bentley look good. What's, look, what's next? You know what I'm saying? What's I gotta next? see what's next, what's bro. Next? I yeah. got to. Yeah. Oh, I got this hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. Damn, that half a million dollar yeah. house though. Look, a whole estate, man. That's our problem, yeah. bro. So, That's real. and the things we have to deal with that people don't understand as far as stress goes, we'll never be happy. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And that's why I say all the time on this podcast, I don't fuck with that word happy. Mm. I hate that fucking word. Because mm. I'm never going to be happy. I feel you though. And if you are, it's, it's like being content. Like you can't, yeah. you can't be content, bro. Yeah. I feel that though. I feel yeah. that. I feel that. I, it's, I feel that. It's never a moment in my life where, I, where I'm happy or content or I'm complacent. Like, and if I am, that's like so that's right. the worst place yeah, in the world so for me. Right. Yeah, I'm yeah. not supposed to be there. You're always supposed to go up. Yeah, I feel that though. I feel that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that shit though, bro. Cause yo, I guess if, if some ain't, I don't know, man. Some ain't go as I as I thought it should. It's like damn, but a nigga overcoming that over, overcoming that fear, that doubt. It ain't no doubt. Ain't no fear. It's all pressure. All this year, man. <laughs> hey, they ain't hard with it. stepping on niggas' necks. It ain't nothing personal. God damn it. So don't take it personal. This just it gotta come out. The confidence coming out this year, man. It got to. It got to. Cause you got yeah, a project coming this year? I got plenty of projects. I dropped two. Uh I don't know if you know. I heard your last one. I heard your uh, last one. The Sigga Fuck. Uh-huh. I dropped that. I got I got man, I'm loaded, bro. I got I record almost every day. Shout out to Future, because that nigga inspired me a lot, bro. Man, I feel like Future oversaturates his market, though. You think so? Yeah, Why I think he drops think? way too much. You think so? I think I think for him, I think the most an artist like him should drop is twice a year, at the most. But what if somebody records every day, and you just sitting on so much music? <sighs> so, I feel like he could be the greatest if he drop. Uh, a music video every month, or you know, a song here and there, a freestyle, woody woody woo. But as far as like projects, when you're the best, you should only drop your best. It shouldn't be a situation where it's like, oh, I got all this music, let me put together a project. Now nah, I think at the end of the year, you should come together with one project. So you okay, drop what? It. Do you mean like with an album? Because you know they consider a lot of the stuff to be mixtapes. Uh huh. So it's like you don't, you don't agree with him putting out mixtapes as well. I think I think we should go back to a mixtape being a project, whereas you rapping over beats. You you rapping over popular beats. That should be okay, a mixtape. So like that. Okay, okay. Okay. And the album should be you know you create music. The full body. Uh huh. Okay. Hmm. But as far as like you an up and coming artist, yeah, I think you should drop shit oh, yeah, as soon as you yeah, get I, it. I'm gonna get them here. Yeah, gonna, I'm giving them here, bro. Yeah, I'm and you should. <laughs> I'm giving you them should. Hell. That's what I respect, bro. Every, I'm trying. Every Man, morning, I got I got homeboys that rap, and we get into mean debates over this shit. Yeah, bro, drop that shit, yeah. bro. You are not Jay Z and Beyonce. Yeah. Ain't no surprise drops. <laughs> Drop that fucking hey, look, music, bro. That nigga was thinking like that last year, bro. I'm like, man, shit, I gotta wait, I gotta have a date. Uh, uh. Nigga, yeah. don't nobody know I gotta, you yet. I gotta have a mean ass rollout. No, nigga, nobody knows you. Nobody Drop know that you, shit, man. bro. Push, just push, bro. Just push, man. That bitch. Push that shit, bro. Every chance you get, step on the nigga neck, bro. You got to yeah. when you, bro. You gotta have that hunger, and that's yeah. the thing I like about you. You got that hunger, bro. Most people don't have that hunger. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you noticed that about people, like. Um, 
you probably don't pick up your energy because you're in your body. Yeah. And I can tell you're one of those type people that's like that's not able to observe yourself. Mm. And um I am though. I can feel that type shit. And bruh, you have to just have that energy. You have to have that yeah. hunger, have that drive. Most people ain't got that shit. Yeah. They don't give a fuck, bro. They wake up every day and be like, oh, I got kids, so I can't make this meeting. I ain't got time. I ain't, yeah. I ain't got time for that. Bro, there's 24 hours in a day, bro. There's 24 hours. Yeah, no. Nah. Man, that's that's probably why I don't work with a whole lot of whole lot of people right now. Because I stay up two, three days straight. Shout out my niggas, Equinox. When I first came back to the city, I was in the yo about two weeks straight. No sleep. Like, we in that bitch all day, every day. I ain't, man, I ain't go to work. I ain't work for, yeah, I ain't work for about a month when I first came back. I was just in the studio, bro. But it's like, if I don't get that vibe, then it's like, I can't really work with you because it's going to slow me down. Like, like, that shit is, oh, uh, what's the, uh, damn, I can't think of the word. Um, Like, the shit rub off on you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't afford that, bro. Mm-hmm. I can't, like. Nigga, let's work. Like, if we ain't, see, what we doing if we ain't working? You got to have somebody like-minded. Yeah. Because if not, that shit just, is going to slow me down from my momentum of, of how I feel, like how I drive, how I go. I can't be around that shit, man. No excuses. Because I already know it's going to be times where I got a few excuses. I need somebody to say, shut the fuck up, bitch, and let's go. Like, yeah. I need that type of energy, bro. And Don't I it suck when you ain't got that motivator, though? It, mm, you said do it suck? Yeah. No, I ain't gonna say that. Like sometimes, yeah, it's like, damn, I wish. But then it's like, I try, like I said, I try not to dwell too much because it's like, then I, I know me, I get in a slump. So I just use that shit, honestly, as motivation to step on a nigga neck. Like, fuck wishing. Like, y'all niggas ain't working. Y'all niggas making statuses about grinding, but y'all niggas ain't grinding. Now, I'm gonna talk about that shit in the music. Like, that's just gonna be the motivation for that song at the moment. You feel mm-hmm. me? That's just what I do with it. Yeah. Niggas love doing that shit too, bro. It's so much flexing and capping going on. I don't even use words like capping, but yeah, I, ain't I gotta to relate to them. <laughs> 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 bro, I got a podcast. It's called No Cap. Okay. And the reason why the reason why the title is No Cap, because on the podcast, I tell my homeboy, I say, bro. I want to say cap so bad. <laughs> that nigga was like, that nigga was like, that shit is kind of cool. Man. And I was like, bro, no cap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, that shit used to have different meaning back in the day, though, bro. I remember I used to listen to the rich kids back in the day. And like, niggas would be, they, they'll say like, oh, them boy, oh, they, they'll actually say like capitalizing. Yeah, and it was like saying like niggas making money like oh them boy them boy just hit a jewel like that's what they were yeah, talking about. They then capping. It, kinda, it swapped though. It had it still got different meanings to it now, but oh I know what you're saying like they hit a jewel, they capping. Yeah, like they multiplying. Big ball, and capping. now yeah, and now it's like now it's like oh they capping, oh, they, they lying. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Like ball cap. Like what the fuck did that even come from, bro? We got so many terms. I just want to know where the fuck it came from. I watched the video on YouTube though. Uh, I don't remember the they they post a lot of frequent videos about like hip hop and rap and shit, but they was going through history of songs where artists use the word cap, and uh-huh. they go I'm talking about that transcends way back like the nineties eighties, but a lot of like West Coast artists used it back in the day. Too short niggas from Houston like Pimp C and Bun B they'll say stuff like high capping back then though, but it been around for a while though. It's, it's yeah. part of the culture slick, though. It's a lot of words that get recycled and, and a lot of fashion, too. Because, like, I say it all the time, bro. I got some motherfuckers around me. I'll be like, bro, you dress kind of feminine. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never wore no tight pants. Hey, man, I ain't gonna fly. I got my skinnies on today, man. I ain't bro, them flex, ain't skinny, man. bro. I'm talking about these, these boys. These boys be having them booty mangs on. Man, they, I, ain't, I, ain't had, I ain't had them, man. But I, I, no, these, these, these skinnies gonna get for me, though, man. I ain't going no bro, size them ain't further. skinny, bro. Man. These boys be having the booty mains on, the jeggings, bro. Nah, I, ain't, I can't uh-uh. rock with if, that if, shit. If bro. I gotta do all this to get them yeah. on and put them out here, nah, them But they be joking on me because I wear, dog, I wear white boy shorts. So they be <laughs> See, trying to joke on me, bro. That's the swag, though, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fuck with that, bro. I turn, uh, I turn 29 next week, and uh, next year I'll be 30. So I'm like, I ain't got time to dress like a little kid <laughs> no more, bro. I'll bust some J's out here and there, yeah. but. 
Well, I'm grown as a motherfucker, bro. Yeah. That right. shit over with for me. I put on Facebook all day. I said, well, we came a long way from them 5X tall tees. Oh, I seen that, too. I seen that. We came I a long that. way from that. I just think about that shit that, randomly. Bro. Shit and crazy. I, bro, it is because I got so many old pictures where I'm looking crazy as hell. When I was young, I used to have long hair, looking crazy as a motherfucker with the red eyes and my school pictures, high as hell, <laughs> looking stupid as fuck, bro. <laughs> Came a long way from the five X tall T. They bringing that shit back in style, slick though. They trying a lot to. of girls like wearing uh wearing big t shirts too. Yeah, they be wearing that the boy weird. pants. Bro, fashion is crazy, and then a, a a lot of these boys don't even understand where fashion comes from because fashion is a weird thing where it's like, especially now where we are. Yeah, because um a lot of Europeans, a lot of Europeans decide what fashion is, mm. and most of them are gay. Yeah. So it's like y'all boys wearing all this fat, European, yeah, yeah. a yeah, lot of y'all yeah, wearing true. this European clothes. That's true. And they gay. That's true. So now y'all look gay. That's true. Y'all wearing platform shoes and tight jeans. Yeah. Y'all that's boys true. look gay. That's true. If you name some of the top designers, then yeah, you yeah. yeah. They all gay. Yeah. 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 Top five, gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riley boys, nigga. Nigga, you gay, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you gay. <laughs> and I ain't got nothing against gay people, but it's like, bro, y'all wearing clothes of people that's y'all don't gay. Even, y'all don't even know it, though. Yeah. And I want to put them on game, like, bro, you motherfuckers gay, bro. As long as that big got the right symbol, they ain't tripping. T- uh, Tommy Polo. As long as it got the right symbol, they ain't tripping. Yeah. They gonna, they gonna, they gonna be. Speak, that. Speaking of symbols, though, before we end the interview, speaking of symbols, show. Sure. Uh, I ain't know you had a Sable World pennant. Yeah, man, a little some, little something special, man. You know, I uh, I want to give myself some. Last year I was rocking dog, a dog tag chain, and I had a charm. Uh, shout out to Charm by Keish. She uh made a a, a charm bracelet for me back in like 2016, but I broke it. I fucked him. Bust my ass at work one day and popped the, uh, the the bracelet. But I kept the the world charm and I just put it on the necklace. And I just wanted to upgrade a little bit. You feel me? It was like my my way of having a trophy for what I did, what I accomplished, what I feel like I accomplished last year with the music I released. Feel that me? shit fire too. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I noticed that shit as soon as I seen you. I was like, damn, he got the Sable World shit. Appreciate it, bro. And then uh, the Sable, bro. I told you that's my favorite project, bro. Yeah. That's my favorite shit, dog. Uh, sure. I was in here. That's why they was in here talking about it when uh when you pulled up. See, okay, so I agree with you with uh how you speak about future because like I'm putting out a lot of shit right now, but my next real project has to top that. And that was just an EP, so it's like I'm I'm gonna put a lot a lot of work in my next whatever my next main project gonna be a full length project, not just like five six songs. So I agree with you on that. I want to so, put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, as far as as far as where you are right now, you have to build that catalog. Yeah. So I I understand the I understand building your catalog, but also working your old shit because yeah. if you're introducing yourself for the first time, you as an artist, you're gonna always think your latest thing was your best thing. Yeah. Because I do the same shit. My last podcast was always my was always my best podcast, but in reality. There's a podcast that people fuck with more than others, yeah. and and I know which one they are. <laughs> but to me, the last one was always my the best, best one. one. Yeah. But you have to get outside yourself and just put all that shit to the side yeah. and figure out what it is. Mm. So sure. it's hard. It's hard for me also because the ones that I know people gravitate towards more, most of the time, be my least favorite. Mm. That shit crazy. Yeah. That shit be crazy. Honestly. Um, there's two I can think of that got a lot of plays. They both like over 300. Yeah. And they my least favorite. That's crazy. I'm talking about my least favorite. Damn. That's crazy. And my favorite ones is probably my least played. Hmm. That's some shit to think on. It is. Because it's like you have to literally sit down and you have to figure out um, what is what. And come to reality and just look at things from the bigger scope. Yeah. Damn. I, I ain't gonna flip. You just put me on some game with that shit. I gotta got down. Yeah. I gotta tune in. I'm not I'm myself. not telling you your best project is Sable World. I'm telling you Sable World's my favorite. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Man, I be having a hard time trying to figure out what my favorite cause I get so stuck on shit, man. When I record new music, that becomes what whatever the newest thing that's playing in my ear for myself becomes my favorite. And yeah. I just try to continue to top that shit. 
But yeah, bro, I wanted to talk to you about support. I seen a post that you posted. Was it this morning or was it yesterday? I've been posting a whole lot of shit between in the last twenty four hours. I seen hours, that too. So what made know. you post so much uh, shit on social media? I I just been trying to. I don't. I, I I have a lot to say, and sometimes I feel like I ain't good enough. That that battle within, and then I don't really care for social media, but I be trying to get back into the the whole thing of trying to trying to. Trying to use social media for what it's worth, but mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna have a little fun this weekend, do some, do some, do some dope shit for myself, and, and have some me time. So I was like, you know what? I don't let people see like shit. You know, I know how to live a little bit too. I ain't just boring all the time. But mm -hmm. I don't know if I posted that today. What, what did I say? You was uh, talking about support. Shit, I don't know what I said, bro. You basically was just talking about uh, how you're supposed to support the people that support you. Oh, oh, that was the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the morning, man. And I, honestly, I was thinking about my parents in, in 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 that time frame. Honestly, I had I don't know where the thought came from, but it was just like, man, I know I I've, I've been a nigga that try to reach out to people so often and try to like get people to be there for me. And it's like some people just not going to be there. Some people just not that. That's not what their intentions are. Some people look at you as like, oh, shit, let me get over on this nigga. Like, that's what some people's aim is. But then there are some people who they've already been there for you. It's some people that's going to always be there for you. But we tend to overlook them. Like, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how the game goes sad to say. But it's like. Until you actually sit back and and return that same love and support to those people that that are there and that will be there for you, then it's like you're gonna continue chasing it from somebody that's not gonna give it, and you gonna lose. Like you gotta return to the people that's giving to you in order for it to continue to be like a bigger ball, a snowball effect of that same love and support, and you'll attract more people that want to support you. Seeing like how you support the people that support you, cause people see that shit, bro. Like even though you don't know who's supporting you, people see who supports you. People know, you know what I'm saying. People paying attention to all that shit, and like they see like, oh, he showing love back to the people that's really down for him, riding for him. All right, cool. I know that's somebody that if I if I gave my all to them, they give back to me as well. Like, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I just want to return the, the love to the people that's that's been there for me. Like, that seemed like the best thing to do anyway. Why give to people that's not not saying you gotta give to somebody in order to get something back? Like that's not the way yeah, you I know look at saying. it. But why not give to the people that give to you versus trying to give, give, give to somebody that's not gonna give to you? Yeah, right? I understand that completely, dog. Because, bro, nine times out of ten, it's dog. I'm gonna just be real. I said, I said, PC Slim was out the building, bro. Bro, it's always the people that's the closest to you that be around you every day. That be the most least supportive. Yeah, and that shit it's sad. Yeah. And um, I don't know what you were saying about your about your parents, but as far as like my homeboys, the ones that's with me every day, bro, some of them be the most least supportive, bro. That's how the game go. Yeah, that's how the game go. Shit, mom, dude, some pops. The only people that I could ever say just really been down. Like they know me up and down. No, they know my fuck ups. They know my flaws, mm -hmm. and it's like. They see something bigger in me and they still up, you feel me? It's some people that ain't even able to see the potential. Or like they see the potential, but they don't believe in where you could be. And that's why they don't, you know what I'm saying? That's why they don't support. That's why they don't I, believe. I always say judge a man by how he treats his parents. And um, I did this episode on my podcast with my mom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't even know, I did that episode like, three months before Mother's Day. Mm. And I held on to it for Mother's, for Mother's Day, Day, but I had the intentions of doing it on Mother's Day. Yeah. Because I was like, you know what? This would be good on Mother's Day because a lot of people will get to get to know me and understand how, why I am the way I am. Yeah. And that's why when I have conversations with people about topics like love and stuff, I never think about like a girlfriend or something yeah. like that. Because the reason why I know what love is is because my mom and nobody supports me like that person. Yeah. See, and that's what people don't get. I ain't never. I I've been fucked up my whole life because it's taken me twenty six years to really grasp that concept, bro. Mm -hmm. And I think that it really today just clicked. Cause I was like, man, I want to do some shit for my mom and my daddy. Just and I'm like, damn, bro, where this energy been at? You know what I'm saying? All these other years, even though I do stuff, it's just like I go out my way for so many people that ain't here no more. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like. They that yeah the definition of love like 
parents, they know that shit. You know what I'm bro, saying? Bro, they know it. And they love you so unconditionally. It's crazy. It's bro. crazy. Unconditional love for real. Unconditional. Like, that's the real bro. definition of that shit, bro. That shit's so unconditional. Shit you real. can never be replaced. Ever. And I say that all the time. You're supposed to live your life for your parents, bro, because you should never leave your parents on the face of this earth without you. That's real. Because that's the cause that's the that's 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 their biggest fear. That's real. It's having to bury their children. That's real, bro. And a lot of people don't understand that, and they live their life crazy. Like, uh, so you from Augusta? Yeah. And this weekend, uh, Memorial Weekend, I'm gonna put this out so people gonna know Memorial Weekend just passed. It was a lot of shootings, a lot of crazy things that happened. Yeah. Hundred degrees outside. It's hot out of them what is man. hot? Yeah, what is hot? Inside. For some reason, <laughs> niggas be shooting, bro. And it's like, bro, I be thinking like, y'all young niggas don't be thinking like, bro. You gotta live for your parents, yeah. bro. Yeah, the tables do turn at some point in time. Like thinking about just like older age and and just sickness or whatever, whatever it may be. However you think about it, like because I, I think about stuff now. Like my folks getting older, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like the dynamics of the family change. Like I've always looked at them as like superheroes, but. You know, even though they ain't gonna never take their cape off, it's like it's time. It's been time for me to put my cape on for them. You feel me? Yeah, you know. Like, it. It's been time, and you gotta you gotta think like that. Like I feel like a lot of people think from a perspective of like, oh, that's my mama, that's my daddy. They grown, they older than me. It's gonna always be like this. They gonna always be there. They take they take shit for granted, but you can't. You can't. Cause shit, when shit gone, shit, what you gonna you gonna be sad as hell and be that be your biggest regret then. You mm -hmm. feel me? And I ain't trying to let that be my biggest regret. Bro, regrets is so gross, dog. Fuck That's why that. I asked you about regrets, bro. I had man, I, I, I lied, bro, cause I had to think about that shit, bro. I had to think about that I shit. I knew it because that's the thing I convinced my homeboy of today. My homeboy was like, I don't regret shit we went through as kids because goddamn, it made it made me who I was today. Bro, I say shit like that too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like everything I've been through yeah. too made me who I am today. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, boy, I regret a lot of shit because yeah. I did a lot of stupid shit that I wasn't thinking of and I didn't see. Yeah. And I tell him all the time, like, especially where we from, bro, where we from. Um, a lot of people get to acting crazy and acting like, you know, they just like, I just got to say it, PC Slim out of the building. I just got to say it. They think they're like gangsters of the year. Boy, our parents stayed in quarter million dollar houses, boy. <laughs> boy, we fucked up. We yeah. made mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot yeah. of shit we shouldn't have did, yeah. boy. Yeah. When you come home to a quarter million dollar house, I don't care if you like off every other month, boy. Boy, you you're in a quarter million dollar yeah. house, boy. Yeah. You better motherfucking get your yeah. life together. I don't care. I don't care your mama going through a divorce, none of that shit. Yeah, you better get your motherfucking your life together. What? Boy, you better run track. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna beat them white boys out at that white school. <laughs> Put that energy to something else. What? Man. And these boys talking about they thugs and shit. Boy, you better sit your ass down somewhere. Real, real talk though. Real mm -hmm. talk, man. Real talk. But yeah, um, bruh, life struggles. It really prepares you for the future, bro. Indeed. I believe that shit wholeheartedly. I do. I do, man. Yeah. Nigga done been through some shit like everybody done been through some shit, but it just it's just the the mindset, being able to see, being able to understand, being able to apply that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Shit, cause it, it take it took a nigga a while to get down apply the knowledge, like nigga done been through it and then it's like yeah. shit, the shit resurface again cause Shit, I really didn't learn my lesson, but application of that knowledge though, because everything you go through do prepare you for where you're going and where you're going to be. I got to ask you too, what does Sabo World mean? Sabo World? Mm -hmm. Sabo strength acquired by overcoming. Yeah, but what about Sabo World? The world, like, the world got a couple meanings, bro. Like, for one... And I don't, I don't, I don't mean no, no harm to nobody that called me a local artist or none of that. But my name got the world in it, so I ain't shit about me local, bro. Like I've never been local. I didn't start making music when I was in Augusta. I did in a whole nother city. I done performed in multiple cities within my first year. So like I've always had a global vision for what I do. You feel me? And I another another meaning is just like I. I've been in different different arenas, just worked so many different jobs. When I've been in the military, been in college, I've been a collegiate athlete. You know what I'm saying I just I, I've met so many different people. It's like I feel like what I got going and what I what I speak about 
it comes from so many different places. I could touch so many people. I ain't just stuck to just talking to like black people or black men or black women. Like I could talk to Asians. I could talk to white for it don't matter to me. Like it's this shit bigger than me. You feel me? Like it got a couple meanings, bro, but it's just the shit big. That's what the world come from, man. Yeah. The shit big. I'm with you on that. What got you to all these places? Um, honestly, not really believing in myself, not knowing what I wanted to do, just trying shit, honestly. Just trying to find success with something, I guess. I don't know. Just, and I was naturally good with shit, so it was cool, but it's like, that shit wasn't for me. But everything hindsight 2020. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to speak on what kind of shit that got you moving around? Like, was it like carpentry or anything like that? Nah, uh, shit, I did some maintenance work, but, uh, man, shit, 2011, I played college ball up at a school, uh, what a damn school called, Brevard College, the oh, D2 okay. school, yeah, you yeah, familiar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, I, know that. I never go back to Brevard, shout out Brevard, <laughs> I met some real <laughs> niggas up there Brevard, I ain't gonna lie, we was the only niggas up there, goddamn, mm-hmm. after that. Kicked out of school, joined the military. I was in the Guard, National Guard, for five years. Got kicked out of that. Uh, I went back to school in the midst of being in the military down in Statesboro, and that's where I kind of really found myself at down that way. In Statesboro? Yeah, it's crazy, bro. That shit will forever went, be home for me. I went to Georgia Southern. For real? Yeah. You graduated? Yeah. For real? Uh-huh. Man, I, I, went there, I went there two years. I got a social degree at GMC. I went to Georgia Southern for two years, and I got a bachelor's out there. That was so. When you graduated? I graduated in 2014. Damn, I, I almost was done at the same time as your ass. For real? I, I, I started school 2015, but I probably didn't seen you before, bro. I used to be down there from 20, 2011 on up to the time I moved down there, bro. What got you in Statesboro? See, I used to be down there, bitch. Dug it. Clubbing <laughs> in the club, we'll leave. We'll leave. Got down from a What club nigga. was popping in? Platinum. Platinum, like a fool. Boys. Yeah, I already know it. But platinum was just, that was home, bro. Man, we stayed in that bitch, bro. Yeah, a whole city of Augusta might be in that bitch one night, bro. You might catch everybody in there. We might run the club, but yeah, platinum. Yeah, heavy. Statesboro was great, bro. I um, I had some crazy times in Statesboro, though, bro, bro. My first time going to Statesboro, um, not first time, but my first time going out there when I was in school, it's a funny ass story. Um, it's crazy too, cause my birthday next week, yeah. my birthday June 3rd. Okay. When I moved to uh, uh, Statesboro to go to school there, yeah. was on my birthday. Yeah. The day of my birthday, I drove to Statesboro, now had my up. shit, put that shit in the apartment. You my homeboy was like, shit, what's up? What you trying to do? No, I was like, fight, shit. No. I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to drink. He was like, well, let's go hoop. Then we're going to drink. And I was like, all right. I go to the gym. We hooping. I go up to dunk. A nigga undercut me. I take the ball. I go to half court. Somebody slap it out my hand. And they just take off running with the ball. And they, they still playing up and down the court. I'm standing at half court. And I'm looking like, what the fuck going on? And then some big swole ass Q dog, he like, Nigga, you call your own fouls. Welcome to Georgia Southern. And I'm looking like, boy, what the fuck? I'm mad as fuck. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck wrong with these niggas? I'm like, these niggas got like fucked up. And I'm looking at my homeboy. I'm like, hey, boy, these niggas got like fucked yeah. up. And he was like, man, chill out, bro. You getting wild as fuck. You trying to fight niggas in? Goddamn. Take your head back to Augusta, bro. You tripping. I'm like, Augusta? Nigga, fuck Augusta. Ain't got what did you do with Augusta, about? nigga? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, this nigga just undercut me. I'm going to oh, die. Shit. <laughs> bro, that was my first experience going to college in Georgia Southern. I was like, bro. Bro said, welcome to Georgia Southern. That nigga said, welcome to Georgia Southern. <laughs> Big, swole, cute dog ass nigga. Damn. And he had a purple shirt on. He was like, welcome to Georgia Southern. You should have got the stomp in the yard on his ass. Man. What? <laughs> oh, this is going to be stomp the yard, man. I'm going to come with that lime one and chop your ass up. I'm going to stomp the yard. <laughs> Hey, bro. Statesboro, Statesboro was cool, though, bro. I, I, I fuck with Statesboro, but at the same time, I ain't going to lie. When I went out there, bro, it was more some college shit for me, bro. Yeah. Like, I was at a point in my life where I was like, bro, I'm gonna eat, I'm, I want to eat noodles. I'm going to eat these motherfucking ham and cheese sandwiches. 
and got now I'm gonna take my ass to school. Yep. I'm gonna get my life together, bro. That would have worked by the time I actually got to 2015. Got down, that would have would have same shit. Mm-hmm. Burrow the spot, man. You won't get the shit together, man. But you ain't get, shit out there. Yeah, you get, you get your <laughs> shit together down in the borough after a while, man. You get your shit together down there, bro. Ain't shit out there. You really ain't got no choice, bro. That shit dead, not though. Yeah, that I heard they ain't super, got no club. That shit super. You know they dead. been they been dry, so man. they they can't get no liquor. I don't recommend no kids go out there to go to school. Damn. <laughs> They got uh, what the dude name is Black or Hollywood? I don't know his name. Yeah, oh, nah, he got, yeah. He got he got the, the hangout down there now, but oh, it's called a hangout now. Yeah, it used oh, to be. Okay, oh, because he had platinum, but uh, it Gattles got shut down. It used to be. Yeah, he had uh platinum. It got shut down because uh that lady got and that boy that got killed. Yeah. Yep. He got the shooting yeah. and that bitch shut everything. Man, they yeah. had a shooting on the graduation, the night before graduation last year. Got them what three niggas got shot. Mm-hmm. Like three of them out in the parking lot of Midtown. They didn't close that bitch down. <sighs> Back to the positivity, man. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. So what got you on the piece of positivity, bro? Oh, shit. Needing that shit, man, for myself. Just them, Like I said earlier, them internal affairs. Like, I don't know if you ever got down and had times where you be like you, you have like these emotions or these feelings, and you don't even know what the fuck they come from, and that they strong as fuck. Like I'm talking about, cause headaches or you be crying and you're not even really sure why. You feel me? I'm going through and, it. Like huh? yo, like nigga be needing that peace. You feel me? And like I fuck with Starlito heavy. I think I started listening Don to Trip him. and Starlito. I lead with both on too, but Lido separately though. Like his the first project I heard from him was called At War with Myself. And the intro track was that shit spoke so deeply to me. Like the nigga screaming on the beginning of the song, it's like that's how a nigga felt like, but not really being sure of 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 why. And like just knowing like it's probably so many people that probably dealing with that same shit, but some people you'll never know, cause you know sometimes we be having our personal vendettas with with people and and whatever, you know what I'm saying. But we don't know what people be dealing with, and like like I said, I, I've had my fair share of fucking people over, doing fuck shit to people and and causing harm, and like shit, I'm just trying to balance it out now. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I ain't if I hurt somebody's feelings now, it ain't intentional now, and I apologize. You feel me? But I. I just want to try to help somebody to to see like the light versus versus causing them to see darkness. You feel me? For me, just knowing like where I've come from mentally and spiritually, like I just want to try to help somebody to see something that I see right now. You That's feel what me? I was just about to say. That comes from overcoming, yeah. overcoming a lot of things, bro. And a lot of people they'll they'll never be able to relate to what you overcame yeah. to get to that point, and they'll never understand it, even if they did. Even if they did go down the same journey. Yeah. But that's what life is about, bro. It's about getting better every day. Every day. Just one percent. Just one percent. You ain't gotta be mm-hmm. no big leap. You feel me? Just one percent. As long as you one percent. That's it. That's all I focus on. Yeah. Shit. That's where I'm at right now too, cause it's like it's one of them things where it's like if you're not trying to better yourself, you don't have to try to better me. Mm-hmm. If you're not trying to better yourself, yourself yo. I can't I can't fuck with you, man. Yeah. And you ain't got shit to lose. Oh, no, hell, hell no. I got nah. to stay away. Hell no. Nah. Yeah, that's the most evilest person. Detrimental. Fuck that. <laughs> like, I love you, but stay over there. Uh-huh. Stay over there. I got, up. man, I got people like that right now, bro, but I ain't going to get on that too heavy. That's another topic, huh? That's another <laughs> topic, bro. For real. But before we get out of here, support. How you feel about the support you've been getting lately? Um, one thing I had to step back and do is really just appre- like the video today. Just appreciate the support I do get, cause especially with that social media, like you know Instagram and everything, you can see the people that watch you. You know what I'm saying, and don't go like your shit or don't go share your shit or, you know, they ain't like they might like you. You can see who's interactive with what you're doing on social media, and sometimes I know I get caught up in, damn, why they ain't. Oh, Damn, why they ain't watching or why they ain't sharing? Why they ain't letting me? Fuck all that. Like, it's people that do hit me. It's people that text me two, three page messages like, yo, this shit meant this to me. And it's like, sometimes I, I overlook those things, you feel me? But, man, I, I get way more support than I actually, um, 
I actually think I do, you know, and I appreciate any and everybody that has taken time to, whether you liked it or not, scrolled on my shit, watched my shit, clicked on something, whether you shared it through 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 uh word of mouth, whether you had something good or bad to say, I don't give a fuck, cause you helping me in the long run. But for everybody that that that's done something for me, you know, whether it's just pray for me or whatever, like. Man, I try to say thank you to God every day, cause I, I do get I do get a lot of support, bro. And that shit crazy. Like this right here is proof of that shit. You feel me? A lot of artists don't understand that. But even before I get into that, um, when I uh first got to your music, you were supporting my podcast, and I was like, dang. This guy keeps sharing my stuff. Let me check his music out and see what his music's talking about. And I heard it and I was like, oh, this shit is good as fuck. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, let me go ahead and share this. So every time you did something, I shared it. But what a lot of uh, artists don't understand is that's what it comes from. You have to build that network yeah. because honestly, shares is a network. Yeah, It's a thing where it's like you got... You got twenty five hundred friends on 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 your Facebook. This person got twenty five hundred friends. That shit double right now. Y'all only got five hundred mutual friends. That's two thousand people plus yeah, that yeah. that can see your shit. That shit double. So right now. exactly, bro. People don't understand that. Like it's so important. Networking is the key to life. That's that's the big yeah. That's the that's the that's the big deal right there. Mm-hmm. Honestly, shit. You got you got you got to. I don't know. I think you probably hit that shit on on the head earlier though, just people feeling as if they've already obtained and even when you obtain shit like the people that are on the big stages, the big platforms, they don't hold their head up as if they they better than somebody. Like you can't. Yeah. That shit gonna hold you back. Cause ain't nobody gonna wanna fuck with you. Mm-hmm. They don't feel like you're gonna hold your nuts on me, goddamn, if I exactly. if I do so love. And ain't nobody got time for that yeah, shit, man. Nah. It's about it's about remaining humble. And staying graceful. Forever though. Yeah, Forever that's though. what it is. Forever. And we can end on that positive note. I appreciate you doing this with me, dog. I appreciate you bringing the gifts too, man. I got a lace with hey. something else. This ain't one of the Sabo World shirts. This is something else, something else I lace. It got a little message on it, though, that I'm trying to learn Bro, whatever myself. you give me, I'm here hey, for it, bro. People, bro, people bring me clothes all the time, and a lot of people don't know... Um, I wear clothes. Um, I wear them as advertisement too, but it's fine. You can just give hey, me clothes. Hey, let folks know what size shirts you wear. Whatever. Hey, you I wear let them large. Know, bro. Everything, man. They ain't need no large. Bro, I wear so large. I'm gonna have to get you something right. See? What it is? A medium? a medium. Oh, give me two weeks. I got you, bro. <laughs> bro, I, I done got, got fat, bro. I've been drinking. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I've been drinking. I've been eating. I've been getting wild as fuck. It's holiday season. <laughs> hey, holiday <laughs> season. <laughs> It's holiday season. <laughs> Bro, I got big out of nowhere too. I used to be in shape, feeling good. Yeah. Um, if you listen to my podcast from the beginning of the year, I was on that shit talking big boy shit like, yeah, new year, new me, goddamn <laughs> vegetables, yeah. all that shit. Boy, I got wild as hell this year, boy. <laughs> hey, but I'm going to get back together. Be like though. that, bro. Man, I'm gonna get back together, dog. I gotta stop talking about it. I gotta be about it. But I'm going I'm going to Mexico next week. So boy, it ain't and, number and, shrimp tacos. And, and enjoy it. And <laughs> tequila. What? Tequila and shrimp tacos. Single one dollar one dollar shots. <laughs> what? Single de mayo. Every day. So it's gonna be after that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I appreciate you getting on here with me, dog. It's another Shut episode up. of Sit Down with Slim, man. Make sure y'all check out Sabo uh, music. It's on SoundCloud. It's anywhere else? Spin Rilla, uh, iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, all your major platforms. Whatever you listen to music on, Audio Mac, uh, my mixtape, it's on whatever. YouTube, I swear it's on whatever. Plug your IG too, man. You got an interesting IG. Everything is Sabo World, S A B O W O R L D. That's on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, whatever, man. Just type this shit on Google, man. Shit, you see me in person. Don't ask me what my real name is. Just say, hey, that's Sabo World. Shit. Yeah. That's it. Fuck with him, man. Another episode of Sitting Down with Slim, man. And we out. Yo.